to know another question I've probably been asked about a half a billion times by now? What protein powder should I buy? These days I feel uniquely qualified to answer this question thanks to the fact that I've been in this industry in some capacity since 2008, I'm lactose intolerant, I work at a supplement store, and I am beholden to absolutely nobody. Have you seen my subscriber count? Have you seen my follower count on Insta? Twitter? Who in their right mind would pay for that? So basically, you can rely on me to have metric shit tons of knowledge and experience that has been bought by nobody because none of that matters to anyone who'd want to compromise my integrity with bags of cash. Let's get into it. But where do we start? With you, of course. I like to say, you aren't what you eat, you are what you absorb, which is from PN, I think. But the point remains that you need to absorb the nutrients from what you eat in order to benefit from it. Being intolerant of a food or something in the food will inherently compromise your ability to absorb the nutrients in it. But being allergic to any of the ingredients in something you eat would be a huge problem, aside from the lack of absorption. While looking into the scientific evidence surrounding inflammation's relationship to food absorption, I ran into this 2010 study from the World Journal of Gastroenterology that states, quote, independent of the cause and location, inflammation, even when minimal, has clear effects on gastrointestinal morphology and function. These result in altered digestion, absorption, and barrier function, end quote. A legitimately shocking and worrying conclusion that has some frightening implications that we can discuss in the comments below, but not in this video. So if you have an intolerance or allergy, a whole mess of proteins can be pulled from the list just like that. For those of you who are lactose intolerant, I have some bad news. Protein manufacturers are actually not allowed to call protein powder lactose free. I've gone looking for an official source as to why, but my best guess is that it's false advertising considering whey is a milk-based product and will always, no matter what you do to process it, contain some amount of lactose. That being said, some do contain a very small amount, such that a number of people can get away with drinking it without suffering any negative side effects. Other companies put in safeguards to assure that their product works for even more people with even more reliability by adding in lactase to help the remaining lactose in the protein powder break down during digestion. If you want to avoid that whole problem entirely, you can opt for a plant-based protein, an egg-based protein, or a beef-based protein. There's a bit of a sacrifice made with whey protein alternatives in that you'll likely lose out in terms of flavor, texture, or in some cases absorbability, as your body does generally have an easier time absorbing whey as opposed to plant-based proteins. Plant-based proteins can also run the risk of not being complete proteins, but any clown-grade company pulling that garbage shouldn't be considered in the first place. Next, you'd want to decide what's most important to you. For some people, it's all about having the very best possible. For others, it's about finding the intersection between cost and quality to keep the budget balanced. Others still want extras in the protein. Or maybe it's all about flavor. Depending on your answer, there are different options available. If you're looking for the best, you've got Extreme Isolate 97. Pricey as hell, but no protein is pure or has a higher yield. If you're looking for a protein with extras, things can get a bit more complicated. Some extras you might find in a protein include things like probiotics, extra added vitamins, powdered vegetable greens, digestive enzymes, like the lactase I mentioned before, and a lot more. It really all comes down to what you'd like or need from the extras in your protein. Depending on what you want, you might be able to get some or all of these extras while also getting something cost effective. If cost is your concern, I'd say this to you. Don't err too much on the side of cheap. If you focus too much on getting something cheap, you end up with a protein with substandard macros, corners cut to increase profit margins for the company. We're talking proprietary blends, lower protein count, higher fat and or carbs, inclusion of suspect ingredients or impurities, you name it. Personally, I'd rather shift back to center and be sure I'm getting something good quality from a reputable company and reliable ingredients, rather than cheap out and end up getting some trash tier protein that just has the word peptides in the ingredients, like it's supposed to mean something other than whatever we want that costs the least, because what the f do you even know about protein? It's some nuts on your face type ingredients, and I'm not down with that. Shout out to Derek for more plates, more dates.
That's his line, not mine. On the subject of cost, if you look at a tub of protein at around 100 bucks and think it's too expensive, go home. You came to the supplement store to invest in your health, right? If so, then realize that this is an investment like any other investment, what you get out of it has everything to do with what you put into it. That little tub you probably looked at is stupid on a number of levels. One, two of those tubs that you're looking at cost about as much or sometimes more than the bigger tub and you're getting less. So you aren't saving yourself any money. Two, do you live in a f***ing box? A coffin? A locker? Okay then you have space to keep a five pound tub of protein. F out of here with that trash ass excuse. Three, you can taste almost any protein at a good supplement store to find out if the flavor is up your alley. If they don't let you taste it or return it based on taste, don't shop there. Simple as that. Four, you're gonna need to take this stuff frequently enough to easily justify the five pound tub in order to reach your fitness goals. Unless you have an immaculate, super dialed in diet. Shut up. You don't have an immaculate diet. Stop that. It's a lie. You and I both know it's a lie. But I digress. Maybe you're looking for flavor. If so, you have some good options, some better than others, but it'll all come down to your tastes. Keep in mind how you'll be using the protein. I always ask people this because if they plan on using it in smoothies and the like, then I tell them to go vanilla. Vanilla will always blend well with other fruity sweet flavors, but others might not. I like a good chocolate peanut butter flavor too, but I don't want that mixed with berries. It, that sounds horrible. Regardless, think about what flavors might fit into the I can drink this daily for two months category and go with the best fit because you'll likely be drinking it for that long and that often. Lastly, purpose. There are a few types of protein worth mentioning when it comes to protein in a supplement store. Isolate or hydrolyzed, concentrate, and gainers. Simply put, isolates are best for those looking to be as stripped down as possible with their choice. So it's only bringing protein to the table with as few carbs and fat involved to keep calories as low as possible. This lets you add protein to your diet easily without making a major impact on your caloric intake. Concentrates play well for those looking to bulk a little and don't care as much about calories or just would rather save the money. It also has lower protein per serving, higher fat and higher carbs, which brings with it higher lactose. So be wary of that if it's an issue. Gainers are protein powders mixed with good sources of fat and carbs to create a protein rich and calorically dense product to help those who need to increase their caloric intake to gain weight. So if you need to gain a bunch of weight, these can be very helpful for that purpose. Here's a list of products I'd suggest for each of the categories I've mentioned in this video so far. And there you have it. The answer ends up being less of a this one type thing and more of a decision tree, but this should help guide you to the end pretty easily, even if none of the proteins that I've suggested are available to you. So. What are your favorite proteins? Let me know in the comment section below and tell me why it's your go-to. References will be in the description below the video along with my social media links. So make sure to follow me, especially on Instagram so you can be part of the giveaways I got planned in the future. Also, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell so you can be part of the galaxy and get notifications of all of our videos as soon as we drop them. And while I'm at it, don't forget to share this video with somebody who you know has a problem with this. It does so much to help the channel, and I appreciate every single one of you and all that you do to help spread the word about what we do here. And of course, stay shining, because the galaxy can only be a bright and beautiful place if we all shine together. Peace.